Um, this is one big dish. Yeah. What's this do? So this is uh, a bit of an evolving project um, that allows me to bounce signals off the moon. The moon, 380,000 kilometers away. There one way, one way on average. And then the signal's gotta come back. If we're sitting on the moon and we're listening to the signal, it's probably super, super strong. I think I read once that it's the moon's like 1% reflective. It's a really small amount that yeah. comes back. And obviously yeah. the moon's not sort of dead flat. It's like got rocks and craters yeah. and stuff in it. Okay, so the brains of the operation looks like it's underneath this table. Is that right? Yeah, this is the uh, this is the IP65. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's 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 the go under here? Let's have a look. Okay, this is where the this is where the brains live. <laughs> oh, uh, we got some gear. The, the Raspberry Pi controller there. Um, and that's got a touch touch. Yeah, which is a touch screen. That's yep. uh, that's a Raz track um, controller. So it, it obviously controls the dish. Um, we've got a 12 volt power supply over the back, which obviously powers the whole thing. Um, it requires 12 volts at about 6 amps. Um, there's a PoE injector for the camera that, yep. that allows me to look through the rifle scope. Uh, and there's uh, a wireless AP so that I can look through the camera with my phone. So the rifle scope allows you to see where the dish is actually pointing. So we calibrate the, the rifle scope by peeking up on sun noise. Once we've got optimum sun noise, we then very carefully put a welding lens over the front of the rifle scope uh, and adjust the, the, the rifle scope so that the crosshairs are pointed exactly at the sun. So then hence we know then where the dish is pointing. Once we know where the dish is pointing, we can then um, calibrate the tracker on, on the moon. So if we, if we um, align the dish onto the moon and hit, hit calibrate, basically then the tracking software knows where we are and it knows where the moon is and it'll keep it all tracking and you can you can see the moon through the crosshairs on the eye on the camera you, you can yeah except today we probably won't because there's way too a little many bit, clouds but a little bit cloudy it's very bright out here too so what what's the feed you've got going on here in the front of this dish okay so that's um it's just it's a standard my tech feed which is designed for about 10.6 gigahertz but it's it's beautiful on 10.10.3 uh, so that's a waveguide feed uh, WR75 waveguide feed uh, and that uh, it's really cool we've got this because it's it's a purpose purpose built feed for this dish so it, it provides optimal illumination I like to leave the skirt on the side of it because it it sort of does a couple of things it, um, it it helps with ground noise when you're pointing very close to the horizon you don't get sort of ground noise coming up and entering the dish a, as easily and it also provides some physical protection for the feed when you take the dish off and lay it down, you can actually like lay it down on the face and it's not going to bend the feed. Speaking of, protect, <laughs> speaking of protection, what happened the other day? Because you're showing me here oh, yeah. that... You can see where the dish used to sort of sit by the sort of the, the bit of dead grass. We had some wicked winds here a couple of days ago, um, <laughs> so... just on 100 kilometres an hour here. And um, yeah, my wife rang me at work and she's like, the science experiment is moving. <laughs> So, we... <laughs> so, so you've obviously got 20 kilo weights on each side, um, so that you've got a little bit of weight. But I mean, this thing, this thing also mounts on the back of a trailer too. We also it didn't does. mention that too. It does. We've we've had it before on the back of a, uh, funnily enough, an orange trailer, uh, and we've taken it up to the club rooms before and um, and done some some uh, demonstrations up there. And look, it's 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 really almost too big to be mobile. That controller that we showed in there, the Raspberry Pi controller, drives these actuators, right? It does, yeah. And it and it's all it's auto tracking. Everything's auto tracking. Everything's just... automatic tracking. The the only limitation to this is I, I decided to use um, a linear actuator for azimuth drive because all of the gearboxes that I tried just had too much backlash. Yep. Um, and uh, Rex VK7 MO said you'll get the best results out of using a linear actuator, which I resisted his advice for a while, but it, it's, it certainly does work. So the only limitation I've got is if we want to go from um, tracking the moon on moon rise or moon set, you basically have to undo the bolt on the actuator, spin the dish around and then rebolt it. And that's what all those lugs are. Okay, so that's, that's the transverter. Um, and as you say, all, all of the RF, that all happens inside there. Uh, so there's a 10 gigahertz transverter, uh, a preamp, uh, a PA, 
and, and all of the associated switching. And you got so you got 20 watts into this dish, and how much gain is on this dish? I have to double check the figures, but I think it was 40. 4 dB of gain. Okay. And with the 20 watts coming out of it, it ended up, yeah, like I can't do that sort of calculus on the fly. <laughs> I'll put it on the screen, 44 dB of gain and then 20 watts into 20 watts, yeah. that so is a IP. lot of a lot of kilowatts, a, I think, a lot of, of ERIP. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much don't stand in front of it which when it's going. A lot of people do 2 and 70 EME. What's different when you go up to sort of these type of frequencies? Look, I've not done any other bands, but I think from, from just talking to people and, and, and reading is that t 10 gigahertz is just a little bit more demanding insofar as you, you don't really have much room for error like I don't think you have a lot of room for error on on two meters and 70 centimeters really but I think on 10 gigahertz you've just got to really be mindful that every point one of a DB will can be the difference between make or break but yeah it's also surprising how how well it works like this is a 1.8 meter dish with 20 watts and so far there hasn't been anyone that i haven't been able to work so if someone wants to get into eme um, they don't necessarily have to have a dish this big we did a video a couple of years ago you had a smaller 10 gigahertz dish yep. which um, gets you you know can get you on that band but if someone wants to operate on say two meters or 70 centimeters sometimes even just 100 watts in a single yagi should get them going sure to work some of the bigger stations sure, there's, like there's that. Yeah. Some, some of the big guns um, you can work them with a single yagi on two meters and 70 centimeters and and, and, and 1296 obviously Two metres and 70 centimetres are linear, so, so you can just have like a straight Yagi, like horizontal yep. or vertical. Yep. Once you get to 1296 and above, you really need to begin looking at circular polarisation. But yep. there are lots of, lots of guys on 1296 that are using um, like loop Yagis or, or, yep. or linear Yagis. Because yep. circular, circular polarisation helps because the polarisation can shift, can't it? Um, well, it on will. Way, once, once, yeah. it, once it hits the moon and comes back, it will reverse. Yeah. So the... the um, the normal choice of feed is the septum feed, yep. which basically you have two ports. You have a transmit port and a receive port, and it, it swaps the polarity, or it's one port is basically left-hand circular and one is right-hand circular, so yep. yeah. Is there Doppler? There is Doppler. There's Doppler, because the, the moon's moving. moon's moving away from us, yep. yeah. Yep. The, the, main, the main problem um, is spreading. Okay, what's spreading? So spreading is, is, is the effect or, or the, the, the consequence of the fact that the, the, the moon doesn't all, it sort of wobbles a little bit on its axis, but also when you when the RF hits the moon and comes back, some of the RF that hits this side of the moon and this side of the moon will come back at different times. So effectively uh -huh. the, the, the signal will be spread. So, and depending on where the moon is in its orbit in relation to the earth, the spreading can be very, very good. Yeah. So the moon can be effectively be sort of centered if you like on us, but if it at its worst, you can get spreading of like 250 hertz. And we're talking about digital here at the moment, so using WSJTX, but you can, if you have a big enough system, use SSB voice. You, you need a bigger dish for SSB, uh, CW, yep. uh, and yeah, and digital. So so There's, you can hear you can hear yourself off the moon off this. I can I can see my my here. echoes on, yeah, on WSJTX. I yep. certainly can't hear, but no. So you can't I've only ever heard one voice off the moon. Oh, okay. I've heard um, Peter OZ1 LPR who runs a, a four metre dish and 700 watts. Okay. That's, that's, yeah. That's Which is like, <laughs> if you go a much bigger dish than 1.8, like 2.4 is probably an optimum size. How big is this? Years. This is 1.8. 1.8, yeah. yep. So if you go to 2.4, effectively the, the beam width of your antenna is, is the same size as the moon. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're sort of on the moon, you, you'll illuminate the whole moon and it's good. If, once you go to a bigger dish, then you start getting to the point where you're only going to illuminate this part of the moon. So if, if, if you and I tried to work each other and we each had six metre dishes, yep. we'd, have, we'd have fantastic <laughs> signals. You've just been out of shot the whole time. Oh. <laughs> That's all right, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I have a good face for TV. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if we both had six metre dishes and we were both pointing at the moon, but if you were pointing at the top left hand corner and I was pointing at the bottom oh, right hand right, corner, right, yeah. We, we, there would you won't, almost be yeah, no signal. Yeah. So How does that go then? Because if you've got if you've got the moon, because like yeah, as you say, once you start getting to these you know bigger dish sizes and these smaller I suppose areas of the moon that you're pointing at. How do you make sure that you get, because the, the geometry is also different because we're talking about, we're setting up today to 
try and work someone in Europe if they're around. Yep, if they're awake. So they're on the other Still side of the in. world. So the geometry is kind of different because they're, are we beaming at exactly the same point on the moon? Because, you know, of where well, And that's where that guy's the same, is that, is that by having a, a relatively small dish, you can say that you're illuminating the whole lot. So, uh, so even if one of the big guns yep. is pointing at, you know, this little segment, I'm looking at the whole lot, so I'll yep. see them. Like lots of people say, oh, it's great to have like a 10 metre dish on 10 yeah. gigs. It's like, yeah, well, it's sort of, it is, but it's not. Okay, so this is the setup. You've got the 9700 is the radio, mm -hmm. and you've got your GPS, GPS locked over there in the corner too. Yep. So everything's all on frequency, all set up. So what are we going to do now? We're going to do an echo test yep. to see if, um, so obviously looking through the, the rifle scope, ideally it'd be nice to be able to see the moon. Um, too much cloud. But there's too much cloud. So I'm pretty confident that it's working, but it's always good to just do a quick echo test. So we've set up WSJTX in, in echo mode. So if we go down to mode and go to echo, yep. then um, we, we pick a frequency, and I've picked 10368150. Uh, and then over on the Doppler screen, it's pretty important to obviously select a Doppler mode of own echo. Now what WSJTX will do is you send a two second burst of uh, 1500 hertz tone, and then it'll listen for it to come back, and it'll plot, it'll plot what it hears on, on this graph here. Oh yeah, there's the 1500 hertz tone. Yep. So on the screen here, it's seeing it come back. So it's saying that that's the time, that's the hour, that's the level that it's hearing it, that's the Doppler shift. And that's, that's the spreading or the width. Is that the Doppler shift in, in hertz? Is, yeah, is it, it is. And if you go back to the other screen here, the, the Doppler, it's, it's that number there is what, is what we're seeing mm -hmm. sort of coming back. Yep. So 17 kilohertz. And so you've got, you've got, so you've got width and then what's the next? The next one, the N is the number, like a, like a sequential okay. yep. number Transmission. of transmissions. Yep. The Q is the quality. Now once it hits 10, it means that it's, um, it's confident that it's a good signal, it's 100% it's locked, but the signal to noise ratio is basically the, the strength of the signal coming back. And then so you're getting a signal to noise ratio of about what, minus 16? Minus 16 map? point, yeah. Yep. Which is sort of pretty good. And DB error? DB, uh, that's the DB error, that's, the, that's the, ah. the, the, the possible, the calculated possible error. Obviously we can't hear the echo in the speaker, minus 16 no, is too but low. What, but what we can do is if we, if we go back to the, to the waterfall, mm -hmm. You can actually see it. So that's it there. Yeah. If so you, you were talking on, about that spreading earlier on. There's the spreading on. That's the, right. So if you waterfall. have a look on the yellow line, the, the the audio spectrum line down the bottom, you can see that instead of it sort of coming back as like a nice sharp sort of tone, yep. it comes back as like a wide, a wide spread signal. Yep. And that's because it's 150 hertz wide. 150 wasn't it? hertz wide. 150 yeah. hertz. Yeah. Wow. So the other screen that you've got open there is you've got a logger open. So all of this is you can't just call CQ on the moon and expect that someone's going to come back. You kind of need to... Well, not unless it. you've got a very big signal that <laughs> yeah. people are going to be tuning and crossing. Oh, wow, what's that? So people jump on these loggers here, don't they? And they post messages about what's going on on the band if they're active or to schedule a QSO or something like That's that. That's right. This is, this is the HB9Q logger, which is effectively Facebook for EMEs. Yep. Um, so the, the HB9Q has, has a really unique where everything's divided into bands. Yep. So if you're doing 10 gig EME, you click on that tab and it'll show you all the people that, that, are, that are online, that have been online, yep. and, and so obviously the, you know, the chit chat. And so at the moment what we're doing is we're just waiting for the beacon. The, the first thing is, is there's a beacon in Germany, right? That transmits on the moon. There is. And at the moment it's, how many degrees did you say? You said it was uh, so four, so four, four degrees. Yeah, four degrees of elevation. So, above the horizon. So. so they probably won't turn it on until it gets a little bit higher because yep. I'm not sure in, in Germany it might be firing into houses or whatever, so it might take. And then we should be able to decode and see the call sign and the signal strength of that beacon, right? We, we certainly will. We're decoding the beacon. Yeah, how cool is that? So uh, DL zero SHF, super high frequency. Yeah. <laughs> so they just come on and you can hear it in the speaker. It sounds very, 
very hollowish. Again, it's got that spreading. It's got that yeah. 150 hertz of, of, of spreading, which sort yeah. of is, is very much like the auroral sort of effect. And you can hear the CW. It also idents in Morse code and you can hear it. So It, it does, yeah. Because it's very early in the morning over in Europe, um, there isn't anyone who's actively on at the moment to actually try and make a contact. So, No, someone might come on. Um, like like all EMEs, somebody always needs to be up in the middle of the night. So it's either us or them. So, um. <laughs> yeah, because usually you're always sending me a message saying, so uh, I was up at 3 a.m. this morning making contacts. <laughs> Yeah, the last time I, I worked, um, I worked uh, actually at um, Antonio e, um, Echo Alpha One India Whiskey. We had, we set up a skid, and I got I set the alarm clock and got up at three o'clock in the morning. Had the skid, had a chat, and then went back to bed. So. <laughs> Geez, that's really getting loud now. Yeah. and you can see it in the waterfall too. Oh yeah, quite easily. And that last decode was minus eight, which. I think you were saying minus eight's pretty much about as strong as it gets. Yeah, look, you can do some trickery with the, with the 9700. It's got the noise reduction system. And if you turn that on, you can, you can, go, you can pick up like sort of 3 dB, but it's, it's all a bit, it's sort of like fudging the figures a little bit. Like, yep. I think it's always good to just use the same settings and then you can tell how well your system's working. Yep. Um, but minus, minus eight is pretty good for something that's coming... Sort of off the moon. Seven, 760,000 kilometres yeah, round so trip. At the moment, the degradation is, is really good. It's only minus 0.6 of a dB. So the, the distance away is 365,744. One way. One way. That's correct. Yeah, because yeah. it's got to go both ways. That's right. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty impressive. So this is a portable dish that you've got. Yep. This is a 600 mil dish. And we used this a couple of years ago to make contact to Europe. Yep. And if you want to see how that ended up and the system that we use that's installed on the back of this, a little bit smaller than the other system, then there will be a video that appears on the screen.